Hi, this is Henry Silverman, and I'd like to give a short presentation on changes in the common rule and specifically focus on the impact on doing research on biospecimens. But first, let me give a few definitions. First, well, what is considered human subject research? Well, this is research involving living individuals about whom the researcher obtains information or biospecimens through intervention or interaction with the individual. This is usually prospective research. Or the researcher obtains, uses, studies, analyzes, or generates identifiable private information or identifiable biospecimens. This is usually retrospective research or secondary research. So what is secondary research? This involves use of information or biospecimens for other than the original purposes for which the information or biospecimens were initially collected through interaction or intervention with living individuals. For example, a separate research study that has no relationship to the secondary research or a non-research activity, for example, clinical care. So what is broad consent? It's a term used to describe human subject research consent that is not specific to the investigator's primary research project, but instead is a nonspecific consent that permits institutions to collect, store, and even use subject data and leftover biospecimens for future research with additional consent, so long as those future researchers have been adequately described in the applicable consent. Now, under the current U.S. regulations, human subject research is, as we went over before, involves an interaction or an intervention with a subject, or if the researcher obtains samples containing identifiable information. Now, research that involves anonymous samples that were collected or research on anonymized samples by researchers who do not have access to the code linking to identity, that is considered non-human subject research. This is important for research involving a tissue repository or a data bank. And on the right-hand side of the slide, we see recipient investigators who are requesting to do research on specimens that have been collected and stored in a research repository. If these recipient investigators obtain non-identifiable samples, that is not considered human subject research. Now, under the current rule, there are four primary options for conducting secondary research. One, the researcher could use non-identifiable information or non-identifiable biospecimens. Second, one could obtain IRB review uh, if one has collected a study-specific consent for that research, or one could obtain an IRB waiver of consent. And finally, one could meet an exemption category, most often exemption for category. However, there has been some concerns with the current common rule. First, the story of Henrietta Lacks, whose cells was prospectively obtained from her cervical cancer, have been used throughout the world without obtaining consent originally from Henrietta Lacks. Second, there's been lawsuits over the research use of newborn screening samples without parental consent. Also, biospecimens that were prospectively collected from indigenous populations, for example, the Havasupai tribe, were used in secondary research without prior consent to do this secondary research, and that eventually led to harms to community. Another concern that has come up with research on biospecimens is the recent confirmation that it is possible to discover the identities of individuals whose genomic data had been de-identified. And finally, there's been a growing body of survey data showing that many prospective participants want to be asked for their consent before their biospecimens are used in research. All these concerns with the uh, common rule led to these original proposed changes to the common rule. 
First, all biased specimens, regardless of their identifiability, would be co covered under the common rule, and thus would have required consent for secondary research of non-identified biased specimens. In other words, non-identifiable biased specimens would be considered human subject research. Also, the proposed waiver criteria for informed consent became correspondingly narrow. In effect, researchers would have been required to obtain broad consent under the proposed rule for any potential downstream use of biospecimens. Well, uh, when the proposed changes in the common rule was open for public comment, there was a lot of expressed concerns about these proposed changes to the common rule as it was a rigid framework. And the new changes were proposed to the common rule, and this is shown in this slide. So, in order to do secondary research, there are more options. One, one could use non-identified information or biospecimens. Two, one could obtain an IRB waiver or alteration of consent for identifiable specimens. Three, one could obtain IRB review if one had obtained study-specific consent. Four, one could do research on secondary samples if one had obtained broad consent. And lastly, one could see if their research study met an expended exemption four. Now, let me discuss a few of these. Concerning option two, obtaining an IRB waiver or alteration of consent, there is now a new criteria in addition to the first four criteria that is under the old rule. Specifically, this new criteria involves if the research involves using identifiable private information or identifiable biospecimens, the, one has, has to show the research could not practicably be carried out without using such information or biospecimens in an identifiable format. Let me go over a few options on expanded exempt option four. Secondary research use of identifiable private information or identifiable biospecimens could be performed if identifiable private information or identifiable biospecimens are publicly available or information which may include information about biospecimens is recorded by the investigator in such a manner that the identity of the human subjects cannot be readily ascertained directly or through identifiers linked to the subjects. The investigator does not have to contact the subjects or re-identify the subjects. Or one could do secondary research on identifiable information that is collected by the research is regulated under HIPAA. Let me quickly go over exemptions seven and eight. Exemption 7 essentially covers the storage and maintenance of identifiable data or biospecimens, and Exemption 8 covers the use, that is, in research of data or biospecimens collected under broad consent. Let me end by just mentioning that there are other issues to consider with, with this topic. One regards the disclosure of genetic research. The practice of not giving individuals the results of genetic research is changing, but now many commentators now argue that there are legal and ethical obligations to give results under certain circumstances or conditions. Another issue to contend with is human tissue ownership, essentially who owns the biospecimens. Another issue is human tissue research and commercialization of the tissues. Finally, this slide shows a few videos that you could watch that gives more information about broad consent and secondary research. Thank you very much.